The anime tells about Kaisel, a young guy with mediocre fighting skills, who dreams of becoming a knight who saves the world. When his friend goes on a dangerous mission, Kaisel and Free set off to check on their friend. On their way, they are ambushed by a flock of demons. They are rescued by two messengers of a legendary sorcerer, and are commanded to go to the Tower of the Sage. There, Kaisel figures out a surprising fact about himself. In the royal palace of Orvelia, Kaisel is training with his friend, Claus. Kaisel wants to be a great knight and protect everyone. Claus, who already becomes a knight, forces Kaisel to train hard. As it happened before, Kaisel is beaten up by Claus. Not far from them, Gran and Fles, their fellow knights, look at Kaisel's training. Although Kaisel is still an apprentice, he will become a great knight if Claus trains him. The training is over and Claus leaves them as he has a business. Meanwhile, Gran and Fleg are walking around the city with Kaisel. In the resident area, the people are surprised by the appearance of a dark elf. It turns out that people in Orvelia have been involved in conflict with the dark elf for a long. They are afraid that the dark elf will cause trouble. Kaisel and his friends let the dark elf pass by since they don't find any suspicious deeds. Even so, the people think the dark elf has bad intentions. In the afternoon, Kaisel meets a girl named Free. They are old friends. Free, Claus, and Kaisel come from the same district. Kaisel and Claus dream of becoming a knight, while Free dreams of becoming a priestess. Claus and Free have reached their dreams, and now it is only Kaisel left fighting for his dream. Meanwhile, in the palace, the king lies sick. Bell, the chancellor, comes and reports the current situation. They discuss the sight of demons in the king's forest. The king doesn't want any threat to come near Orvelia and commands Bell to investigate the news. On the other hand, one of the royal officials, Mr. Moriham, comes to the palace with the dark elf wandering in the city before. Although it shocks the guards, the dark elf named Rihit is allowed to enter the palace because he is with Moriham. They then get to meet the other royal officials. The arrival of the dark elf makes the officials tense, but Moriham convinces them that Rihit will not do anything bad. They then discuss the king's forest and information related to the demons. Mr. Moriham suggests that they use the Black Edge army, the dark elf mercenaries led by Rihit. However, no one seems to take the risk. Finally, the royal knights are sent to investigate the matter. Claus, Gran, and Fleg join the mission. After they leave, Kaisel has to train himself. Meanwhile, Reheat and the Black Edge army are revealed to be planning revenge. They have been oppressed by humans for quite a long time, but they have to be more patient. On the other hand, Claus and his armies are ambushed by the demons and the fight breaks out. Fleg is killed in the battle. Claus tells Gran to return to the palace and report what happened while he will withstand the demon's attack. A moment later, a wounded Gran arrives at the palace and reports what happened in the forest. Mr. Moriham suggests that they use Black Edge. Meanwhile, Kaisel and Free are worried about Claus. Kaisel intends to go to find Claus and Free joins him. In the other place, Claus falls and a mysterious woman is standing in front of him. Kaisel and Free set off to the king's forest. There, they find the dead body of Orvelia's knights. As they are looking for Claus's body, several demons appear and attack them. Kaisel and Free fight the demons together. The mysterious woman also appears and corners them. Luckily, Reheat and Black Edge's armies come and fight the demons and manage to take down the demon's army. Meanwhile, the mysterious woman disappears after defeating the demons. Black Edge also leaves after that, ignoring Kaisel and Free. <laughs> After they all leave, Kaisel and Free are approached by a girl named Cleo and a young guy named Roy. They tell Kaisel and Free to go with them. At first, Kaisel and Free refuse to follow them, but Cleo convinces them, saying they are looking for them. Finally, Frey and Castle agree to go with them. The company then arrives at the open area. There, Cleo explains that Dominix wants to meet Kaisel and Frey. They are surprised because Dominix is a great sorcerer in the tower of the stage. Back then, Dominix met them when Kaisel, Frey, and Claus left the orphanage. After that, Cleo makes a magic circle, and they are lifted into the air to the floating island in the sky. There, the tower of the sage stands. Meanwhile, Reheat and Black Edge have returned to the palace. They report they have successfully defeated the demon's army. As a result, the palace inevitably has to depend on them. Returning to Kaisel and his company, 
they finally get to meet Dominix. Surprisingly, Dominix doesn't seem to change since the first time they met. Cleo comments Dominix is fond of hiding his true form into his youth. After that, Dominix brings Kaisel and the others to a room. There, Clausy is lying on the bed, unconscious. It is revealed that Claus was rescued when the demons charged forward. Claus wakes up and is briefed on what happened to Kaisel and Frey. Later, Dominix tells them to stay in the Tower of the Sage. On the other hand, Mr. Moriham is delighted as his plan was successful. If this keeps going as he wishes, he can take over Bell's position as Chancellor. The next morning, Kaisel and Frey are brought to meet Dominix. That time, Kaisel gets informed that his mother, Arlit, was the wife of King Kyle. Kaisel is shocked and doesn't believe it. King Kyle is the hero who defeated the demon lord 100 years ago. Dominix then prepares to tell them everything. Before that, he tells Kaisel that as the son of King Kyle, he may be able to inherit the holy sword, Aya. Dominix then explains to them what happened back then. 100 years ago, Kyle was still a prince. He had a half-sister, Ilya, an elf. Back then, humans and elves coexisted. Kyle always intended to become a good king and make his people have a prosperous life. Ilya promised that she would help him with her knowledge. Once demons appeared and Kyle faced off the demons. Amidst the conflict with the demons, Kyle met Arlate, Kaisel's mother. Their relationship was opposed by the royal political elites, but Kyle kept their relationship. Kyle's father passed away and he was crowned the king. He went to other races' territory to make an alliance. With the alliance accomplished, he went to fight the demons' army in the battle. Kyle was injured and had to go to the refuge. There Arlite met him and told that she was pregnant. Kyle was happy and wanted to name their son Kaisel. At that time, the goddess of light, Lua, showed herself before him and gave him the holy sword, Aya. With the holy sword, Kyle becomes stronger. On the other hand, Ilya did an experiment related to her applied magic. She attempted to make a replica of the holy sword to help Kyle. However, her action was considered blasphemy against the goddess Lua. One night, when the nocturnal sun was in its position, the sorcerer of the Grey Republic, Malduk, opened the dimensional fissure and brought the Dark Lord, Aemond. Kyle set out to defeat the Dark Lord with the Holy Sword, Aya. On the other hand, Ilya, who had finished making the replica of the Holy Sword, Aya, got to leave the kingdom. Meanwhile, Kyle faced off against the Dark Lord, Aemond. However, both King Kyle and the Dark Lord disappeared mysteriously, and the only thing left was the Holy Sword, Aya, while Malduk escaped. Dominix assumed Malduk was still alive and he might be attempting to bring the Dark Lord back. Meanwhile, Ilya's action, which was considered defiling Lua, caused the elves in Orvelia to be persecuted. Dominix and the others then put Kaisel's mother to sleep, and after almost 100 years, she woke up and gave birth to Kaisel. She was ambushed by the demons and was killed. Kaisel then was brought to the orphanage, a place where he met Frey and Claus. Dominix explains the nocturnal sun is going to happen soon. Therefore, Castle needs to find the Holy Sword, Aya. He needs to meet Lorraine, the Great Sage, in Elidora Forest to open the Holy Sword seal. Afterward, accompanied by Free, Cleo, and Roa, they depart on a journey to Elidora Forest. They are ambushed by the demons. Roa faces off the demons. After that, an elf girl named Selene appears and helps them. <laughs> <laughs> After the demon's army is taken down, Selene guides them to enter Elidor Forest. Kaisel and the others are amazed by the sight of Trent. Suddenly, Kaisel and his company are separated from Selene. A small treant called Neka appears and guides them so that they can reunite with Selene. That night, they spend the night sitting around the fire while eating. Not long after that, a huge treant goes on a rampage. The treant is revealed to be attacked by a wild demon, and it collapses. Kaisel and the other charge forward to beat the demon. Neka sacrifices its life to protect Kaisel. Infuriated that Neka is killed, Kaisel cuts the demon's tentacles and stabs its core. He keeps cutting the demon off, although it is already dead, until Selene calms him down. After that, the great sage Lorraine appears to meet them. Lorraine then talks about the Holy Sword's seal. Although Kaisel has come there to meet her, Lorraine can't open the seal right away as there is something she needs to make sure of first. They then depart to Lorraine's house. There, they bury Neka's seed in his favorite place. Lorraine invites Selene to talk in private. She asks if Kaisel is worthy to inherit the Holy Sword, and Selene's answer will influence her decision. However, Selene cannot give her the answer. Selene then heads outside. There she finds Castle in front of Nexus' burial site and looks gloomy. Just then, a sprout emerges from Nexus' burial ground. 
Selen approaches him and explains that Nexha has started his new life, although it is not common for a trait to grow that fast. The next morning, Lorraine asks Selene again if Kaisel is worthy of the Holy Sword. Selene states she doesn't trust humans, but she trusts Kaisel and his companion. Hearing her answer, Lorraine then undoes the first seal of the Holy Sword. It causes the energy of the Holy Sword to flow into Kaisel's body. After that, Lorraine asks Kaisel to meet two people who guard the seal of the Holy Sword. The first one is the orc leader in Ogria Mountain, Eatola, and the other one is in Windland Snow Mountain in Pavel's Hand. Suddenly, a demon attacks the forest. Kaisel steps forward, trying out his new skill. Surprisingly, he manages to defeat the demon with great power. The power of the Holy Sword that flows in his body makes him stronger. After defeating the demons, Kaisel and his friends bid to leave the forest. Meanwhile, in Orvelia, the Chancellor Moriam has gained authority from the nobles to use the Black Edge army to defeat the demons. Moriam sees this chance to make reheat and night. Returning to Kaisel, he and his friends are stopped by the mysterious woman who has watched them so far. Kaisel faces offer. The woman is surprised to find Castle stronger. She cannot understand how he has the Holy Sword aura. Cleo tells her that Kaisel is King Kyle's son. Although it is unbelievable, she finds Castle has the aura of the Holy Sword. The woman tells him that the Holy Sword is just Lua's trick. She thinks Kaisel will only become Lua's puppet and she disappears. On the way to Ogria Mountain, Kaisel and his friends reach the nearest town to buy supplies and earn money at the same time. Rua goes to the market to sell something while Klee finds a job for Kaisel Frey and herself in a restaurant on the outskirts of the town. The owner is Mrs. Wolf. She has the three of them repair the restaurant and she tells Cleo about her dislike of magic. Back then, the war broke out in the town and many people died and only Madame Wolf was left alone. Suddenly, the restaurant is attacked by demons and the only way to destroy them is with fire. However, Cleo is reluctant to use her magic because Madame Wolf asks her not to use the fire magic. However, Madame Wolf finally realizes she is shackled by the past related to magic. Cleo then uses her magic and saves her friends. By repairing the restaurant, Kaisel and his friends get enough money to continue their journey. Meanwhile, Tam, a young member of Black Edge, is attacked by a group of thugs. Moriam believes the thugs are sent by Zero, a noble who hates Dark Elves. Reheat and Rapine immediately handle the matter. They make Zero admit his action while providing proof. Reheat threatens that he will kill him, but changes their mind after Zero's father begs for his son's life. Meanwhile, a sorcerer named Maria meets her acquaintance named Malduk, the former servant of the Dark Lord. As for the next step to reach their goal to resurrect the Dark Lord, Maria and Malduk agree to steal the Holy Sword Aya. On the other hand, Kaisel and his friends reach the town which is destroyed by the demons. They agree to help them rebuild their houses. Frey makes friends with a little girl named Elise who initially refuses Frey's attempt to get close to her. Due to her sincere heart, Frey is getting closer to the kids in that town. The mayor then offers Frey to stay in the town after figuring out she has a good influence on the kids. However, Frey decides to stay with Kaisel and the group. Dislike with Frey's decision, Elise tricks Frey, leading her to the storage room and locks her inside. As Kazel tries to search for her, a giant demonic worm attacks until Frey finally breaks the door and she gets out. She gets to help Kazel slay the demons. Elise apologizes to Frey and they promise to meet each other one day. Kazel and his company continue their journey. They arrive at a village that is destroyed by undead. They take shelter in Johan's house who is revealed to be Elise's father. He is the sole survivor of the village. Kaisel and his friends agree to sleep over in his house, believing they will have a better chance of surviving the undead during the day. But that night, Kaisel accidentally finds Johan is taking care of his wife, Lisa, who is turned into undead in the basement. Johan reveals he tries to help his wife get her humanity back, so that they and Elise can become a family again. However, he finally realizes that his wife has died. When Kaisel and his friends kill the remaining undead, Johan finally reunites with Elise. In Orvelia, Reheat and Black Edge are admired by the citizens. They have just returned from the expedition in the King's Forest. As they walk around the town, Tam leaves the group as he wants to meet a girl named Sheila who helped her the day before. On the other hand, Scarlet tells her father that Black Edge worked very well. Even so, her father still thinks that Black Edge cannot be trusted. The King also cannot believe why Morham can make alliance with the Dark Elves. Scarlet then asks her father to remain calm and leave everything to her. 
Her father instead says that she has no suspicions that can bring her in danger. Afterwards, Scarlet and her knight leave the room. In the hallway, Scarlet is worried about the Dark Goddess, Lee. The Dark Lord is likely to resurrect on that day. Dimia convinces Scarlet that she will fight to protect her. Meanwhile, Tam gets closer to Sheila. They spend the time together until late afternoon. The next day, Scarlet leaves the meeting. According to Ophelia, the fortune teller, the day of Lee will come soon, and the Dark Lord will be resurrected on the day of Lee. They then discuss where the Dark Lord will appear. They suspect it will be the ruins of the Republic of Grey, where the Dark Lord appeared 100 years ago. Therefore, they have to investigate. While the Black Edge members prepare what they need, Tam spends his time with Sheila. He's getting closer and seems to like the girl. Later that night, Tam is scolded by his friends. Reheat understands his feelings, but he asks Tam to focus on his duty. The next morning, Tam meets Sheila and gives her flowers. That time, he tells her a dark story that befell him and his family on his birthday. That's why he doesn't want to remember his birthday. Tam in the past could only run away until he was rescued by Black Edge. Since then, Tam has always been with them. After he tells his story, he bids goodbye and leaves. Even so, he promises that he will meet her when the world he dreams of has come true. On the other hand, Kaisel and his company arrive at the Red Valley, approaching the place where the orcs live. Clea warns them to be careful, because the orcs can be unfriendly to them. Kaisel and his friends cross the Red Valley and meet Kala and the orc shaman and his disciple Dale, attacked by undead. After defeating the undead, Kala explains he has foretold Kaisel's arrival through his dream. Kaisel then explains they need to meet the chief, Aetola, to undo the seal of the holy sword Aea. Unfortunately, Aetola passed away and the current chief is Sieg. Kala takes Kaisel and the others to the orc village, where Sieg reveals that Aetola left instructions to the hair of the holy sword. If Kaisel is really the heir of the Holy Sword, he needs to prove his worthiness in the Holy Temple of the Orcs. And if they fail, Kaisel and his friends will be sentenced to death. Kaisel is brought to a cave where the Holy Shrine is. He is briefed that the Holy Shrine is a testing ground for spell masters. After getting ready, Kaisel enters the cave, and he reaches the center of the cave. He looks around and suddenly mysterious voices are heard here and there. Suddenly, Kaisel sees his mother and the rune turns into his house in the past. Even Castle returns to being the version of himself who was still a child. Castle is lulled by the illusion and lies happily with his mother. After finish eating, they spend time together walking around. Castle is happy and forgets what needs to be done. In the real world, Cleo and the others start to worry about him. He has been undergoing tests for quite a long time but hasn't come back yet. In the illusion world, Castle is still trapped in his illusion with his mother. He does his routines with his mother until he suddenly realizes that his mother already died some time ago. He then returns to his real form and his mother is willing to be left. After that, Kaisel leaves the room where he and his mother stay together. Once he gets out of the room, he returns to the Holy Shrine. In front of him, a black shadow which is the incarnation of Aetola's spirit appears. Kaisel is declared to pass the illusion test. After that, Kaisel picks up the talisman in the shrine and meets his friends. Kaisel hands the talisman over his Sieg. Knowing Kaisel has passed the test, Sieg believes he is worthy of obtaining the Holy Sword. Sieve then unlocks the second seal, and the energy of the Holy Sword immediately flows inside Kessel's body. At the same time, Maldek senses the energy of the Holy Sword, and he proceeds to find where the source of the Holy Sword comes from. Maldek arrives at the land of the Orcs. After introducing himself, everyone is tense. Sieg faces off Maldek, but he collapses as he is hit by Maldek's attack. Kessel is enraged, and he faces off Maldek by himself doesn't want him to get injured, so his friends help him get rid of the enemy and Kaisel faces one-on-one -on -one with Malduk. Malduk senses the Holy Sword inside Kaisel and realizes he is the heir of Kyle. Even so, Malduk is confident that he will win. Sometime later, Malduk is shocked that Kaisel manages to cut off strands of his hair. Enraged, Malduk launches more attacks on Kaisel, has him overwhelmed. <laughs> Surprisingly, Kaisel creates a radiant slash from his sword. Maldek is surprised and escapes. Meanwhile, Castle collapses running out of energy after launching the attack. Castle has to lie on the bed for a while to heal. Meanwhile, Frey uses his spare time to write to Claus. In her letter, Frey writes all they encountered. She also mentions in her letter that Kaisel becomes stronger. Sometime later, Claus receives the letter and he smiles. Proud of his friends who set out on the dangerous journey. Later, Scarlet invites all Black Edge members to the palace. Their arrival surprises everyone in the palace, but the nobles cannot do much. 
Scarlet then holds a meeting with the Knights. After introducing themselves to the Black Edge members, Scarlet starts the meeting, discussing the expedition to the ruins of Grey Kingdom. They are going to bring large forces to their destination. Scarlet also will join them in the expedition as the highest commander. The member of Black Edge comments that a large force is not needed because they are more than enough, but Scarlet tells them not to belittle the power of the Royal Knights and challenges one of the Black Edge members to have a duel. Claus serves as a referee and Azal will face her in a duel with the wooden sword. Scarlet is revealed to excel in fighting. Doesn't want to lose, Azal attacks her more seriously. Even so, Scarlet manages to defeat her opponent. Since then, the members of Black Edge Black Edge's members don't dare to look down on Scarlet anymore. Meanwhile, Morham gathers the nobles. He intends to appoint Black Edge members to become a noble after the extermination of the Demon King. He is opposed by the other nobles as they think it is too much. Moriam explains that by making the Black Edge noble, the palace will lose its power and Black Edge will become the loyal guardian dog. The nobles start to agree with the idea, but they still have one obstacle which is Bell, the Chancellor. Moriam asks them to overthrow him. On the other hand, Bell tries to prevent Scarlet from going to the mission, but Claus ignores him. Claus arrives and tells Scarlet that it is not only them who are fighting the Dark Lord. Claus tells about Kaisel's journey. Scarlet feels thankful and cannot wait to meet Kaisel and his company if the situation is safer. Scarlet then asks Chloe to guard the palace while she and the army are away. Rigi announces to Black Edge that they are going to be nobles after their mission is completed. They cheer for the progress they have made. Reheat explains that Moraham will take away the authority while Scarlet is away. Therefore, they have to succeed in the expedition. On the expedition day, Scarlet leads the army out to their destination. After a long journey, they finally arrive at the ruins of Grey Kingdom. Just then, they spot a mysterious sign on the ground. Tam kneels down to take a look at it and touches it. Suddenly, he is struck by a deadly magic and collapses immediately. Reheat checks his condition and everyone is shocked to find Tam has died. Suddenly, a black portal appears and Malduk comes out, making everyone stunned. Malduk turns Tam into an undead and controls him to attack them. Reheat and the others are angry, and they charge forward to defeat Malduk. However, Malduk is no match for them. In an instant, most of the Black Edge members are killed. Reheat and Rapin are still alive. They attack Malduk at the same time. However, Malduk is still too strong for them. Rapin stabs him from behind. Enraged, Malduk attacks her until she is unable to move. Maria appears not long after that. With one more sorcerer, Rihi cannot withstand their attack. <laughs> after that, Malduk and Maria disappear. All members of Black Edge are killed, leaving Rihi and Rapine who are dying. On the other hand, Kaisel finally wakes up after two weeks. He is informed about the incident when he fought Malduk. Kaisel is annoying that he lost control when fighting Malduk. However, the orcs consider him a hero. Kaisel goes to the place where the battle occurred two weeks ago. A great crater was created due to his attack. He thinks that if he lost control in another place, it might have caused more casualties. Kaisel regrets that C was killed in the battle. However, the orcs don't blame him and call him a hero. The next day, Kaisel and the company get ready to continue their journey. As they leave, Kala calls Freya and tells her that he had a vision. He saw Castle would continue growing and become a hero, but in the end, he would disappear. To prevent this outcome, Frey and the others need to help Castle. After that, Frey joins the company. Castle's company almost reached a village. When Frey gets water from the river, a girl called Rana mistakes her for someone she is looking for, Elaine. She is then briefed that Frey is not the one she is looking for. Rana then realizes she has been mistaken. She then introduces herself as a mercenary from the village of Ahead. Because coincidentally they are in the same direction, they walk to the village together. Learning they are from Orvelia, Reyna warns them not to tell everyone that they are from Orvelia. Soon, they arrive at the village. Their humans and dark elves live peacefully. Kaisel and the others will stay in Reyna's room because the inn is full. As they reach the inn, Reyna is welcomed by a little boy named Leiden. He hugs Reyna and leaves after that. Kaisel and his group notice that the dark elves hate Orvelia because they are considered the oppressors of the dark elves. Learning some people went missing, they assume it is the demon's doing. There should be bodies left behind, but so far there are no bodies at all. They think that the ones behind this are people from Orvelia. Later in the afternoon, Rana is informed that Leiden hasn't come back yet. Rena leaves to search for him. Kaisel and the others follow her to the forest. They go in different directions to find Leiden. While looking for Leiden, Kaisel and Rena are trapped in a hole underground. There, Kaisel tells her about himself, saying as the hair of the Holy Sword, he feels his power brings danger to people around him. 
He then tells about the incident some time ago. Reyna asks him to run if he feels burdened. Even so, Kaisel cannot do that. Meanwhile, Cleo gets entangled in a giant spider web and is dragged away. On the other hand, Reyna and Kaisel find a cave. There are many people entangled in the spider webs, including Lighten. Suddenly, a huge spider appears and attacks them. Kaisel fights the spider with his sword while trying to release the hostage. While he fights the spider, he feels hesitant for a moment and he is hit by the spider. His sword falls off of his hand. Kaisel gets up and continues fighting. Unfortunately, Reyna is captured by the spider. She tells Kaisel to run, but he refuses. He grabs his sword and fights the spider, finishing it off with his sword. Everyone is happy that the people return the next day. Kaisel and his group bid goodbye and continue on their way. On the other hand, Scarlet arrives in a village where Elise lives. They are welcomed by the chief of the village, telling her about Kaisel and his friends. Demia knows Castle as one of Claus's disciples. She wonders what is Kaisel doing outside the palace. Scarlet then tells her that Kaisel and his friends are fighting to defeat the Dark Lord. Meanwhile, Reed hasn't regained his consciousness after he was attacked by Malduk. Scarlet is confused about how to tell him about Black Edge that was wiped out. The news about Black Edge being annihilated by demons has been heard in the castle. Moriam is shocked in disbelief with the news. He is enraged that his plan failed. Claus also doesn't believe it. Luckily, Scarlet and her troops are safe and take shelter in the nearby village. Later that afternoon, Reed finally wakes up and is informed of the truth. He is furious and wants to get revenge, but his current condition doesn't allow him to move. When no one is around, Reheat gets up and walks out. He shuffles along and is determined to find the sorcerer and kill him. However, he collapses on the ground. Scarlet finds him and asks him to return. That time, Reheat vents out his anger and tells her his hatred toward Orvelia, who oppressed the Dark Elves. Scarlet is surprised to learn what the Dark Elves feel about them. Even so, Reheat finally is willing to come back. Scarlet thinks about the Dark Elves. Elise approaches her and gives her flower cakes, and she feels better after that. That night, while everyone is asleep, Reheat leaves the room. On the way, he is stopped by Maria. He is angry and wants to kill her, but she outmatches him easily. Maria then tells him why she saved him from Malduk. It is because of the pendant he is wearing. It belonged to Ilya, who turns out to be her best friend. She gave the pendant to Ilya's family after her death. Because Reheat has the pendant, he may be Ilya's descendant. After that, Maria explains about Ilya who was punished without clear charges. Reheat is shocked to learn that Ilya was trying to make a false holy sword to help Kyle. Maria suggests that he go to the Tower of the Sage to find out the truth, and she disappears. On the other hand, Kaisel and his group arrive in the mountains. They are ambushed by the undead but can be handled easily. Roy is stunned seeing the undead. Castle asks him what's the matter, but he replies nothing. They then keep walking after that. That night, Kaisel approaches Roy, who is pensive near the fire. Sensing something is off, Kaisel asks Roy what happened. Finally, Roy tells him about his past. Back then, he was a drifter in town until he was found by Zayed, the captain of a mercenary band. Since then, he became a part of the mercenaries called Flugel. Zayed was kind to the members. He even helped the children study. Roy wondered why Zayed was willing to do that. As time went by, Roy felt comfortable with Flugel until they accepted a difficult quest to investigate the gray area. Arriving at the destination, Zaid and Pavan, Roy's comrade, were killed after they accidentally touched the magic sign. Flugel was annihilated after that by Malduk, and only Roy survived. When he woke up, he found himself in the Tower of the Sage. Dominix told him that Malduk was the cause of his friends being killed. Since then, Roy has lived with Dominix. Roy tells Kaisel that the undead they encountered that afternoon was Pavian, his comrades who were killed. The next morning, they are attacked by Zaid's undead. Ward races himself and fights the undead. With the help of Kaisel, they manage to defeat the undead. Kaisel and his friends arrive at Windland Snow Mountain. They are forced to walk through strong wind currents until they arrive at a wooden hut. They are free faints due to exhaustion and the group decides to stay until the wind subsides. Kaisel refuses to put his friends in danger anymore. He tries to continue the journey alone until Roy and Cleo stop him and reveal that Free protected them from the cold of the mountain with her magic. Realizing that his friends have protected him in the way he protected them, Kaisel apologizes for his impudent thinking. The group then enters the cave where Pavel, the sorcerer who wields the last seal is. However, Kaisel is separated from his friends by an ice wall. 
Meanwhile, Scarlet's troops get ready to return to Orvelia. Ree asks how to get to the Tower of the Sage. He wants to find the truth about Ilya and her false holy sword. Scarlet agrees to go with him. In the cave, Kaso meets Pavel, the ice sorcerer, who once became an alliance with King Kyle. Meanwhile, Frey, Roy, and Cleo get through the ice wall made by Pavel to meet Kaso. <laughs> Pavel reveals that she tests his friends to find out how much they will do to help him. Pavel then tells him the history of King Kyle. Back then, Kyle came to the cave to ask favor to fight the Dark Lord. Pavel reluctantly agreed, and after Kyle disappeared in the battle against the Dark Lord, he and Dominix opposed Lorraine's protest and ran a secret plan to save Arlhate and her baby who hadn't been born yet. Using ice magic, they put Arlhate and the baby who had not been born in a state of suspended animation and woke them up 100 years later. Although Pavel regrets not finding a better method to ensure the survival of Kyle's descendants, Kaesel does not regret the life he has lived. He declares that he will continue what his father started. With the Night of the Dark Lord's appearance approaching, Pavel takes Kaesel's group to the World Tree, the holiest place on the planet, so they can awaken the Holy Sword Aya. Meanwhile, Malduk and Mariam begin the ritual to summon the Dark Lord. They are surprised to find Kyle comes out of the dimensional fissure. But it turns out to be the Dark Lord Angmund in disguise, and he reveals his true form a second later. On the other hand, Scarlet and Rihi arrive at the Tower of the Sage. Rihi goes to Ilya's lab to find the truth about Ilya. Dominix tells Scarlet that Kaesel and his friends are looking for the Holy Sword Aya. He also explains that Kaesel is Kyle's son. This is intentionally kept secret from the world to ensure the survival of Kyle's bloodline if he did fall in battle. In the laboratory, Reheat is looking for the false holy sword only to find that such a sword doesn't exist. Ilya was actually working on equipment that would protect its user from the Dark Lord's magic, but she died when she tried to help Kyle. Orvelian nobles called her a heretic and made up a story that she was creating a sword as an insult to the goddess Lua. This was done by the palace to eliminate Kyle's lineage and seize power for themselves. Dominix confirms this, and he tries to reveal the truth but no one believed, and that the Dark Elves who were oppressed due to the false charge of Ilya hated her and accused her guilty. Re finds out he is the descendant of Ilya. Moreover, realizing that his pendant is the last version of defensive equipment Ilya was working on back then, Reheat agrees to help Scarlet find Kaesel and his friends. Pavel guides Kaesel and the company back to the Elidora Forest as a part of the World Tree. Unfortunately, they are ambushed by Malduk, Maria, and Angmund. Angmund launches an attack on Kaesel, but Pavel steps in and takes the blow causing them to fall into the river that surrounds the forest. But they are rescued by Maria, who tells Kaesel to take care of Pavel. Lorraine and Selene find wounded Pavel and try to heal him with the forest life source. Kaesel tells them that Angmund is back. Maria wants to talk with Kaesel about Kyle. Lorraine explains Maria was the saint who devoted herself to worshipping goddess Lua until several things happened, and she began to worship Lee, the goddess of darkness. Maria tells Kaesel and his friends about her past life as a saintess and Kyle's friend. She met Kyle for the first time when he was a prince. Maria was also there when he met Arlit. She was a loyal servant to the goddess Lua and supported Ilya in making magical equipment to protect Kyle from the Dark Lord. Unfortunately, during the Battle of Galua Plain, Kyle was infested with Dark Force and was trapped in the Dimensional Rift along with the Dark Lord. Meanwhile, Ilya was killed by the demons when she tried to help Kyle. Believing that Lua had left her friends when they needed her, Maria gave up her loyalty to Goddess Lua and turned to loyal to Goddess Lee. Maria leaves the forest, but before that, she reveals that Kyle has become a vessel to the Dark Lord. This means Kaesel may have to kill his own father to save the world, but Kaesel is confident he can save his father from darkness. Pavel recovers from his wounds, but he admits that in his current condition, he will not be able to reach the World Tree which forces him to undo the last seal of the Holy Sword. Kaesel and his friends and Selene then leave for the World Tree. In the Tower of the Sage, Scarlet writes a letter to Belle, telling him what had happened to her and Reheat. After writing the letter, she meets Reheat, who still looks gloomy after finding out the truth. Scarlet then promises that she will try hard to protect the world from the Dark Lord. Reheat thinks Scarlet is just bragging, but Scarlet shows she is serious. Meanwhile, Kazel's group takes a rest on the way to the World Tree. They make a fire and take turns watching each other. Roy, Frey, and Selene talk about Kazel. They think even though Kazel has gained great power, there is concern that Kaesel will lose control again in battle. 
This surely is very dangerous, but Selene is sure that Kaisel has a strong determination. Moreover, he is accompanied by loyal colleagues, which is why Kaisel will definitely be fine. Meanwhile, Demia and Claus intend to go to the World Tree and help Scarlet. Demia asks why Claus hides the fact that Kaisel is Kyle's hair all this time. If they knew from the start, they would definitely be able to help him and make a strategy. Claus says he only found out when he was in the Tower of the Sage. Apart from that, according to Claus, Kaisel will choose his own path. His dream is to become a knight who would save the world. After hearing the answer, she understands it, and they depart. On the other hand, Scarlet and Reed depart to the World Tree. Reed wants to take the Holy Sword to kill the person who killed his friends. Scarlet talks about Malduk, who can resurrect the undead. Knowing Malduk is the name of the sorcerer who annihilated his friends, Rihi cannot wait to finish him off. Later, Scarlet and Reed arrive at the World Tree. There they find the Holy Sword unsealed. Reed picks it up and gets ready to find Malduk. At the same time, Malduk and Aemon appear. Malduk tries to get close to the World Tree, but is stopped by a magical barrier. Aemon then launches an attack on the barrier and destroys it. Afterward, Malduk charges forward, attacking Scarlet and Reheat. Seeing Malduk is coming, Reheat immediately attacks him with the Holy Sword. He and Scarlet team up to corner him. Dealing with two fighters, Malduk feels a little bit overwhelmed until Scarlet stabs him from behind. Enraged, Malduk makes an explosion around her. Fortunately, Scarlet is able to jump to avoid the explosion. After that, Reheat faces off Malduk by himself. He goes on a rampage and launches attacks on Malduk. After a fierce battle, Reed finally manages to stab Malduk and he is killed. Reed stands in front of his body which is fading. Scarlet tells him that taking revenge won't bring his friend back to life. Shortly after, Angmund appears and attacks them. Scarlet and Reed immediately fight the Dark Lord. They are overwhelmed by Angmund's power. They are sent flying while the Holy Sword slips from Reed's hand. Angmund approaches the Holy Sword and lifts it. He prepares to carry out a massacre. But Claus and Demia arrive and help Scarlet and Reheat. Later, Kaisel and his group arrive there. Aemon turns to their direction and sees Kaisel who is getting ready to fight against him. Finally, Kaisel and his friends start to fight hard and succeed in separating Aemon from Aya. Unfortunately, Aya restrains Aemon's power, and without the Holy Sword, Aemon can completely release his power on the knights. Kaisel almost grabs the Holy Sword just as Reed gives him the pendant Ilya made. The Pendant creates armor that protects Kaisel from the dark power of Angman, and with the full power of Aya, Kaisel frees Kyle from Angman's armor. After being freed from Angman's armor, Kyle is finally able to accept his death and let his soul go to the afterlife. With the end of the battle, demon activity has decreased significantly. Scarlet offers Reed the title of nobility in an attempt to promote peaceful relations between Orvelia and the Dark Elves, but Reed asks for time. Before he decides, he must first educate his fellow Dark Elves about Ilya's actions, hoping this will improve the relationship between Orvelia and the Dark Elves. Before leaving Orvelia, Reheat gives his pendant to Kaisel. Meanwhile, Kaisel and Frey reunite with Cleo and Roy, who are ready to start another adventure together. This is the end of King's Raid. Thank you to keep watching the content from this channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest contents. See you in the next video.